This episode brought to you by Restaurant Systems Pro. We negotiated the space and the, the, the size of it like well before COVID. And so we've got a large restaurant. We're like, what is the future of dining going to be like, like post COVID? Yeah. And so we were like trying to figure out, do we minimize our footprint? Uh, this is more than twice the size of the yeah, original. Yeah. So, and we have a private dining room. So is our PDR is going to ever be a thing again. So we hit a point where we are like, okay, um, let's just stick to our guns. And, and we're kind of committed to go this far. I think, you know, dining will come back. So. Yeah. With excitement, allow me to introduce to you today's guest, founder in, or should I should say co-founder and pitmaster of Fox Bros Barbecue, Jonathan Fox. My man, Jonathan, are you feeling unstoppable today? Always unstoppable. Beautiful, man. I am super excited for your conversation or our conversation. Um, just doing the research to find out how you got to where you are today. Super organic, super, super like slow and steady, just like the food you cook, you know, like slow and steady growth, organic growth. And I just heard so many great things about you talking to other barbecue people. I've had a lot of barbecue joints on the show and your name comes up often, man. So I'm excited for today's conversation. I know you're going to be great, but let's get that motivational, inspirational ball rolling with a success quote or mantra. What do you got for us? Well, welcome, first and foremost. Um, glad to have you guys Thank here you. And, and talking with you today. My mantra is, I think, the main thing I, I go by daily, and it's it's been one for years that I've gone by, is if you ain't learning, you ain't living. Mm. And that's, that's just the, been the way that we've run this business is I didn't know what we were doing when we first opened. So I had to learn a lot of things. So I think when you stop evolving, I mean, why are you, why are you still doing yeah. it? So often, I think people, they, they hold off from starting because they think they need to know everything. And they think they need to, like, they're not ready and they're not ready. But if you just start where you can and you start small and you slowly just push and, and don't let your... Your, your fear get in the way of like just to start right and you will figure it out over time right yeah and I think you know part of that learning is is learning new mantras to go by and and we were on a, a group call with our team and, and something something was said by our HR director that kind of stuck with me and one I've been going by too and kind of using it to to our team but you know it's like keep moving forward and you can look back for a moment and take in what you, what you've done, but just always keep moving forward. So we bought a smoker. We 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 pitched in up between me and the two other people, and we all we bought this little smoker. So Atlanta is a transplant city. Yeah. So you you find there are people that are, were born and grew up in Atlanta, but more often than not, they are coming from another. Yeah city and, and, and missing something <laughs> yeah yeah and there are a lot of people from texas that yeah. live in georgia or yeah. atlanta so um so it was kind of like hey you know these there is something out there and, yeah and people kind of gravitated towards it pretty quickly yeah there was a period of like 10 15 years ago where i feel like there's where like social media started evolving people started getting perspective and seeing outside of their little bubble and there was so much opportunity out there to do something special in your area by going to see what else, like what's happening in Texas. Let's bring that here. Let's be mm -hmm. unique. It was easier, in my opinion, 15, 20 years ago to have a unique selling proposition because of regionality. Yeah. Because yeah. people were just so in their bubble and it was easier to do something and stand out. Do you think it's harder today with how, how diverse a food scene is? In well, cities? people people have uh, preconceived notions. You know, it's... Yeah. it's People see, especially like Texas barbecue now, is immensely, it's hugely popular. Oh yeah, and and people you, they want you know that picture, you know, and it's like and I they'll I, stand in line all day to get. Yeah, it. <laughs> and, and and I talk to um, when I'm talking to our team, you know, it's like we have we have guys that work in our smokehouse that you know spend so much time prepping, cooking, you know, and, and resting the product, and then then somebody on the the line that is you know carving and serving that that product and, and i'm telling that person i'm like hey this product you you need that you, you should find the respect for it because somebody spent a lot of time working on it to get to this point that it's at and it can it can 
be a success off your station or or a mess and you can take this product and just really knock it down to what it shouldn't be with just a miss slice or a miss cut or something yeah or just not caring about yeah. about what you're putting up there and then people when they, they put it when you put it down in front of them the first thing they're going to do is they're going to look at it and it needs to like oh my god look at that or they're going to take a picture yeah. So I was like, there's so much writing on your station, you know? Yeah, execution's important. Yeah. It's not just a matter of, like, having a recipe, but it's how you execute that exactly, recipe. Right? Exactly, exactly. What makes us stand out is just it, we, we stick to our mission, which is, you know, fresh quality, you know, just serving the best that we yeah. can. And, and, you know, we always tell our staff just because we have it doesn't mean we have to serve it. Yeah. And, and we want to make sure that when you come in, not only do you have a great um, – experience but but the food is was you know as it should have been yeah now we're going to talk about how you guys made this brick and mortar scale and like what it was like because at this point you're just cooking barbecue yeah you're not running restaurants this is still this is still all so new to you but you do have somebody in your corner who is in the business yeah so take it from there so he, he had a lot of experience in starting businesses and i had none so it was good and and there's so many things that stand out from that that time frame but he was like let's just find a spot and and but there was no rush it was like when we find a spot that's going to be the spot and then we'll go then so i would say it was maybe another year before we actually found it was you know it was definitely six months to a year yeah it was a frustrating year because you know, you, you get that moment. One thing I, I was like, I always wanted to open a restaurant. I always wanted to open a restaurant. And and being, a, you know, someone who's hospitable and that's what you want to do. And you think it's going to be the answer to all your problems. And, and then you're and, just creating more problems. Yeah, yeah. What was I thinking? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's so frustrating that, yeah. you know, you, you get this – carrot dangled in front of you yeah. but it's like you know it's so far away that you're just like yeah. like come on. <laughs> yeah. and so you know we we finally got to a spot where we we found our the location and i remember he called me and he was like hey it was like a, i think it was a friday that we found it because i need you to drive by and check this spot out and I was like, I looked at it, and, and there was like this large fence around the building, and I wasn't familiar with the side of town that it was in, but I was like, mm, okay, I could see it, and it had a for rent sign on the on the fence, and so we found it on a Friday. He called about it. We he said, hey, Sunday morning, let's meet over there, go look at it. So whenever it was raining, we pulled up, looked at it. So this is after you think you already have your spot. You you were committing to another spot. No, no, this is oh, the okay. only spot. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were thinking like there was another spot that you were about to pull the trigger on and there, this one, no. other one. Came mm-hmm. up. Sorry, keep going. No, uh, we just waited. Like there was like no rush. It yeah. was, I think what in 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 Dan Nolan's head was the right spot. It yeah. just has to be the right spot. Well, that's important. I think it's really like. New people to the industry often get that tunnel vision. Yeah, like you're saying, and that's and and that's where like his, you just want to start. Yeah, yeah, and 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 his expertise and and you know being a business owner, like location, he location, 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 yeah. location. And I'm just like, start. no, I've got the product. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter where we put it. We'll the product. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we looked at it. We we found the building on Friday. We looked at it on Sunday, and. I think on Monday morning we signed a lease. Wow. So what was so right about the space? Uh, it was on a main, main, a busy street. Uh, it was in a neighborhood. So there's a lot of walkable, um, you know, people could walk to it. Uh, it was close to an entertainment district. So, uh, there was just a lot of traffic that goes And Plus, uh, at that time, uh, it was on, 
a virgin a virgin east side of Atlanta. Yeah. You know, and I love that. I love it whenever people like people think they have to go into like the middle of everything to have, but the rent's through the roof. Yeah, it's the best spot I've found listening to stories is on the edge. Yeah, because go as find out where the rent starts to come down and find out what neighborhoods are on the come up. Yeah, and get in before it gets crazy. Exactly, and being from the area, living, spending time in the area, like at this point, you guys were here for almost ten years, so you're familiar with the different neighborhoods and what's on the rise yeah. and stuff and finding those spots on the edge. You're doing that right now, looking across the street. Yeah. There's new construction going up, yeah. right? Sorry to get ahead of you. So, so I didn't know anything. And he was like, he's like, yeah. So he, he had a, he had a way of doing business. And, and, um, and he was like, Hey, you know, I don't like the government in, in my, you know, and so he brought his, his brother out. And his brother did a lot of uh, construction work for him. Yeah. And so his brother just started demoing and building up. And and I think it was when we filed for our liquor license that the, the zoning board in the neighborhood was like, you know, where's your building permit? Who's your contractor? And we were like, um. he wasn't there to answer the questions. <laughs> I was there. And I was like, uh, I know why you don't like the government yes. anymore. <laughs> so we wound up having to start back over, got oh. an architect, got a you know permit, and did all that. So, so here's a lesson. Yeah. What's the lesson? Do the government is you might not like them, but, but you need them. You need them. Yeah. And you got to follow their plan. Yeah. Because they will shut you down. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. It took us, um, we, we eventually it took us several months, but we, um, probably five, six months yeah. to, to build out. We were pretty much, um, on a, you know, we, we, we opened with very little, you know, money invested. So, so you didn't use the original footprint of the building that was there. You demoed that and you we demoed it. that, um, there was, there was the main building, but there was like this awning off of it that was like a covered patio. And, and I remember we built these walls up under the awning to make it kind of a semi-permanent structure. Um, so we had enclosed dining and cause the original space, uh, it was an old gas station. Got so where the kitchen was, there was a, there was already a kitchen with a hood and everything. So that space was really tiny. So we wouldn't have, a, we yeah. wouldn't have a lot of, were inside. you concerned about using, because I know barbecue restaurants specifically run into a lot of issues with the neighborhood because of the smell. Not that yeah. it smells bad, but it's a, it's a constant smell of barbecue. Not everybody wants that. Well, I know at the time there was a, when we were going through all of our, our, um, our licensing and everything with the neighborhood, they didn't know who we were. And, and there was a really popular breakfast spot down the street that I was having ironically massive parking issues. Mm. And so we were on the docket with them and we brought barbecue to the meeting to feed everybody and great way to make neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the popular restaurant was on the docket before us. And, and I remember there was an hour that they were just like con like people were had pictures and charts and, all those parking issues and then it came to us and they're like, they're like any questions nope okay and, <laughs> and so we're out um so we built a smokehouse and we had these smokers and and right after we opened we had a neighbor like right on the back side of the smokehouse and it was a rental property so he was he was pretty pretty easy going about it he had issues with the smoke in the house and and uh, so we wound up, we, we put these really high smokestacks on. So it went over his yeah. house. And and that was pretty much the, that was our only issue for probably the first yeah. five years. And you don't want to shrug off your neighbors because yeah. Yeah. that they'll cause trouble for you. Oh, yeah. We got in trouble with the neighbors. Yeah. 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 As we as we grew and, and, and expanded, or not expanded, but as our business um, grew and our customer base expanded, uh, parking became, yeah. we became the parking problem. Yeah, yeah. So. You guys exploded. We did, yeah. we did. Yeah.